After getting FOMO from seeing all your wonderful HX Stomp boards, I decided to build one for myself. I present to you Strife Factor Stomp. In this video, I share why this board is complete as is without the need for external drives or a MIDI controller coming up. Hello and welcome to the video. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Justin and I'm all about worship guitar, helping you sound and play your best with Jesus. Please consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification button and head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page to download these patches and more to support these videos and my ministry. If you've met before, welcome back. I know I started the year talking about gear idolatry. Even though this particular board seems to go against the spirit of that video, I'm going to share a few things about this board that promote gear minimalism. Firstly, you notice that I don't have an external MIDI controller. And secondly, you notice that I don't have external drives. I'll talk about why you don't need either of them on a HX Storm board because the Storm can fill in those gaps. Number one, you don't need a MIDI controller. Prowl the HX Storm forum long enough and you'll see some usual suspects. The tiny but mighty Morningstar MC6 and its cousins for the smaller boards and the undefeated heavyweight champions RGM Mastermind PBC10 and PBC6X. I'm not bashing anyone who has either of these controllers. I myself have a Disaster Area DMC8. There are two big reasons why you need a MIDI controller. Programming a set list and syncing tempo. I've learned that for the most part in this pandemic, I'm mostly recording. I don't need to pre-program a set list. Secondly, as far as tempo syncing goes, Here's where we'll go to Command Center to see how the HX Storm functions as a MIDI controller. Prerequisites, you do need MIDI cables for this to work. That wasn't obvious. In Global Settings, navigate to the fifth menu, MIDI Tempo. Turn to the second page and ensure that the Transmit MIDI Clock is set to MIDI and Tempo Select is set to Global. Turn to the next page and set USB MIDI on and that MIDI PC Receive and MIDI PC Transmit are also set to MIDI plus USB. Congratulations, you've turned the Storm into a tempo sync hub between your computer and your MIDI pedals. Now dialing in a specific tempo HX Edit when connected will send the tempo information to all your MIDI devices. On Ableton Live, this is even cooler because your session and your pedals will be synced even through song changes. This was important to me as I lead my team with tracks and we sync to my laptop. I could set up each snapshot to trigger different presets on the Strymons, but I found this to be unnecessary. I'm able to get through a Sunday setlist with two delays, two mods, and three reverbs. Exactly the number of foot switches afforded to me by my strings. Besides, the Sunday setlist is currently three songs not exceeding 15 minutes. That's hardly enough time to let the Corel reverb sing. However, if you do need every snapshot of yours to have a different modulation delay reverb machine and you want to set this up, I recommend heading over to Hey Worship Leader where Jimmy discusses this exact topic. The pedals are different, but the principles are applicable. Number two, you don't need external overdrives. The Helix library of overdrive, distortion, and fuzz effects are plenty to cover many different styles. My ears aren't as well tuned as my compatriots and you guys, so to me, I find them sufficient for the day. In particular, the Tima overdrive is a fantastic model of the Timmy, which I've owned before and can attest to its accuracy on the Helix. What makes the Tima my first port of call in overdrive land is the fact that it doesn't color the mids and keeps the high end. This pushes the M models on the HX Storm into a more natural sounding overdrive, which I found to be musically pleasing in the context of a full mix. It also brings out the characteristics of the M, so if you set different amps in different patches with the same comp Tima blocks, it's going to sound different. I've covered how to maximize the combination of compressor and Tima to get clean, drive and lead sounds in the previous video that you can check out here, which leads us naturally into the bonus section. This is my 2 amps AC30 tweet patch that has the Strife Factor and the effects loop before the amps. 
The signal chain is as follows. Kinky Kong, Simple Pitch, Tima Overdrive, Stereo FX Loop, Dual Amps, a Dual Cab, and finally, the EQ block. Flavors of Overdrive are achieved with FS1 and 2, while FS3 toggles the Simple Pitch for that Pog sound. I could swap the Simple Pitch out for any other effect that I need for the patch, including a looper. This patch will be available together with its sibling, where the FX loop is placed after the amp for a much cleaner amp and wet section sound. I'll be sending a patch update to the HX Storm AIO pack, so for you guys who purchase it, this will be free. Question of the day. What do you prefer in your FX loop on your HX stop? Drives or delayed reverb? And why? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. That's it for me. Thanks for watching this video. If you got any value out of it, share it with someone who you know is interested in building a HX stop pedal board. Until next time, I'm Justin and I'm all about worship the town.